A few years ago, something happened in the 3D printing community. Many manufacturers began what is often referred to as the race to the bottom. The goal of this race was to release a 3D printer at the lowest cost while maintaining functionality. Today, we take a look at the Easy 3 K1, a 3D printer commonly found below $100 USD. This price point puts it in the realm of an impulse buy, and the company feels it perfect for newcomers to the 3D printing scene. But the question is, is it any good? That's what we'll try and find out today, right here on Print and Play. First, let's talk about what it brings to the table. The K1 offers a build volume of 100mm by 100mm by 100mm. The build platform is unheated and features a magnetic, removable, textured build surface, allowing you to flex off your prints when the print is done. The hot end is capable of temperatures between 180 and 200 degrees Celsius, so this printer will be primarily constrained to PLA and some flexibles. Shipped with the printer is a USB cable, a small Phillips head screwdriver, and the eight screws required to finish assembly of the printer. It also has a USB card reader with a 4 gig micro SD card, the parts to assemble the filament holder, and a small sample of PLA material. Completing assembly of the K1 is pretty simple and similar to other 90% assembled printers on the market, like the Ender 3 or the CR10. Simply flip up the X slash Z axis assembly onto the base and then secure it into place with the included eight screws. Then connect the Z motors and you're ready to go. The printer itself looks like a toy and the plastic does feel a little cheap. It's not extremely flimsy, but it doesn't feel like it's very robust either. It's available in multiple colors and I ended up with the reddish orange and white version. The entire printer runs on a 12 volt 30 watt brick. To put this in perspective, this means that the entire printer runs on less power than the average hot end uses on a more expensive printer. The connections are located on the right side. We have power input, a USB connection, and a slot for loading the micro SD cards. Building upon the biggest complaints of their earlier models, the K1 includes both a hot end cooling fan and a parts cooling fan, which should lead to a pretty dramatic improve in overhang print quality. My printer was slightly damaged in shipping, arriving with the hot end shroud popped off. It was simple to place back into place, but there are some stress lines in the plastic around the clips, which might affect its longevity. The interface on the K1 has a total of four buttons. A home button, which unsurprisingly homes the printer, the plus and minus keys are used for loading and unloading filament, and finally the play button, which automatically prints the most recent G-code on your SD card. Running your first print is pretty simple. You start by pressing the home button on the printer, letting it finish homing, and then unplug the power. Then you manually move the hot end around the bed and, using the nuts underneath the bed and a piece of paper, adjust the nozzle to the proper height. The card came preloaded with a little rocket ship that prints on a raft and it printed fairly clean. Then it was time to slice my own. Easy 3 offers a Cura profile for most of their printers on their website and the K1 was no exception. I downloaded it and loaded up the Benchy model and set it off to print. A couple hours afterwards and I had a pretty decent Benchy. I've certainly had worse Benchies from more expensive printers. So I started throwing test models at it, trying out different colors of filament. One of my early prints was this adorable mini Stay Puff from Chaos Cortec. I printed it in some Repcord green PLA and it came out pretty well. The layers aren't perfectly even and there is a spot where it seems like it under extruded, but overall it looks quite decent. Next I printed the cute waving octopus. This is a print that I've been running since I got my first 3D printer and it always seems to make it into my test prints. I decided to print a second Benchy in some purple PLA just to see how it turned out compared to the original sample filament and it definitely does look a bit better. I decided to go a little bolder and try a print in place print. This is the flexible butterfly and to my surprise it tackled it no problem. The majority of the joints were free right off the bed and it only took a little wiggling to get the rest freed up as well. Then I thought I'd try the platform jack that was all over YouTube a few years ago. And this one got pretty close to opening up but ultimately it was just too fused together to work. And this is when I started seeing an issue with the way the printer works. In order to keep the cost of this printer low, they've used small geared stepper motors in the place of more traditional NEMA 17 motors. 
This limits the maximum print speed considerably and, more importantly, introduces lower accuracy and potentially a small amount of backlash into your prints. What does this mean for you? It means that, well, the smaller a circle gets, the less circular it's going to be. So, for things like the jack, circular components end up being more like rounded squares and getting stuck together. They also use one of these motors in the extruder, potentially giving the same type of inaccuracies to your filament path. And while I didn't have a ton of concern over the extrusion quality, there was the occasional line of under extrusion. While some of this might be addressed by decreasing print speed or potentially changing print temperatures, it's likely to pop up from time to time no matter what. Ultimately, the hot end on this machine is more like a 3D printing pen versus a traditional hot end. I also wanted to see how this would handle lower layer heights, so I printed Groot in rainbow filament at 0.1mm layers. And if you look closely, you're definitely going to find some imperfections. There's blobs here and there, it's not a perfect print, but considering the price of the printer, I think it turned out pretty nice. The included filament holder is mostly useless, unless you plan on printing only with filament samples going forward. Even a 250 gram spool doesn't fit on it well, and the weight causes the frame to twist. Definitely look for an external spool holder from the beginning. My printer was also exceptionally creaky on both the X and Y axis. I do plan to dig further into the issue, but I wanted to review this as close to how it came out of the box as possible. The other visible issue was belt wear on the x-axis. After a few dozen hours of printing, the right side of the x-axis was covered in a visible amount of dust from the belt rubbing and wearing on the pulley. Hopefully this is the process of wearing it in and it won't continue, but it may require readjusting the belt to prevent it from rubbing or require more frequent belt changes. It also uses belts that are significantly thinner than those on standard printers, which may make finding replacements more difficult. So, where does that leave us with the easy 3 k one printer? Well, let's run through the pluses and minuses. On the plus side, it's cheap, it's mostly assembled, it's easy to get up and printing with, the print quality is better than expected, and it has a small footprint which makes it light and portable. On the negative side, it's slow, it lacks accuracy, particularly in small circles and curves, and it's cheaply made. Ultimately, I think this is getting very close to being a disposable printer. The usage of less standard parts than a traditional 3D printer means that if something goes wrong, it's more likely that you'll just replace the printer than tear it down to replace parts. And where some in the past have bought a cheaper 3D printer with the idea of using the parts from it to build a better printer down the road, that won't really be an option here. That being said, I had a ton of fun playing with this printer. From the beginning it worked better than I expected, so should you buy it? Well, if you're on a budget or want something to play with, or perhaps you want a printer that you can hand off to your kids that won't break your heart if they break it, then this may be the one for you. Alrighty guys, well that's it for this review. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and toss me a thumbs up if you want to see more reviews in the future. And until next time, stay creative.